Hey, Tapping and Lines Math Industry, and we are going to take a look at the Simple Machines. And this video is actually the basic fundamentals for understanding how and why and what physics is. So in the past few videos, we've been learning a lot about how to calculate work, how to calculate power, and also if friction was applied in those problems, then how would that affect the speed, the velocity, the power, and the amount of force you are applying? And sometimes, when you think about applying force on things, since us as being humans, we can't do work without simple machines. But hang on, what is a machine? Sure enough, you think those machines are like cars or those, uh, the ones that go in the factory that go chug, chug, chug. But in the physics world, this is what the definition is. In the physics world, here is what the definition is. So a machine is a noun, and it's a device that is used to multiply the power needed to perform the same amount of work, but with less effort needed. So with machines, we can do and make and perform anything we want to if we put our mind to it. Because a machine can help us perform the same amount of work, but not require a lot of effort needed to do the work. And a lot of the machines that you have saw, like a car, a plane, uh, a manufacturing machine, a robot, consist one or more of these six simple machines that we are going to explain. The first simple machine is going to be the inclined plane. And the inclined plane is actually invented by Mother Nature herself. So what it technically is, is imagine you see a cube right over there. But the problem is that cube is really, really heavy. Let's say like, let's say the, the weight of a car. So soon that's one ton. It needs to go up there, and it doesn't make sense to get a bunch of people to lift with their backs that car onto that platform, which is impossible to do, and number two, I wouldn't suggest that. An incline plane is, yes, you have to use a plane, some kind of platform that is put here and creates a right triangle. Instead of per Instead of lifting the car or the box up, we would drive or push the car up the ramp to get it onto the box. So, an inclined plane is literally some kind of platform that allows us to use less effort, but also multiply the amount of power needed to do the same amount of work. If the platform is long, and it also is very, very, it doesn't have a steep slope. The work needed, or the effort needed, is very low, but you'll perform the same work. And it's a lot easier. But if you are trying to put that thing up here, if that was going up here, which you can't, I can't really do. If I had that cube and went up, it's going to create a lot more effort because it's trying to push against gravity. So the inclined plane, what angle you put at, and the height of the object, the height of where you want to put it, is going to affect how much effort needed but perform the same amount of work. So that machine right there is an inclined plane. The rocket is launching in one minute. We got to hurry. You guys need a ride? Don't want to get through, man. We've got company. <laughs> Don't want to get through, man. We've got company. <laughs> so the next one we're going to take a look at is going to be called the lever. So the lever is kind of like an incline plane. This is our lever right here. So there are two parts to a lever. So a lever has a long beam that looks like this, similar to our platform 
that we used like this earlier in the video. But how is that beam hanging in the air? Well, when I talk about the air, it's actually being supported by something. The thing right here, that green part, is going to be called the fulcrum. And the fulcrum is what's keeping the platform in the air. The main use of a lever is to help you alleviate the amount of effort needed to lift up some, uh, some kind of object. Whether the object is heavy or whether it's uh, light, levers can help you complete the same amount of work. For example, right here we have a balanced lever because nothing is on it currently. So if you have a binder clip right here and put it all the way to the end, notice how the lever is a little bit unbalanced right now. But this flex wheel from the robotics classroom of our high school, if I put it on the same part, it turns out that this is not balanced. And the fulcrum is saying it's not balanced. So what we gotta do is try to make it balanced. We're gonna try to leave that black thing, that black binder clip right there, and we're gonna try to balance it by moving the flex wheel. So if we move the flex wheel, we experiment with it. We're almost there. It's almost there. Oh, whoa, oh, whoa. Oh. It's almost there. If I move it just one. There, done. So now it's balanced. Notice how the distance of the lever and also the amount of newtons on the lever is going to affect if it's balanced or not. That flex wheel is a lot heavier, and since the binder clip is lighter, the flex wheel has to be closer to the fulcrum in order to balance it. If there ever, if there ever, if there ever was a time that you need to lift something heavy like that, you would need to move the fulcrum too. If you move the fulcrum and put it right here, that wouldn't really help you because that leg you're trying to push up. If you move the fulcrum to the right, it's really going to help you a lot. And it's going to alleviate a lot more force. Yeah, go! Get it off! Get it off! Engineering field. This is Amarato. You're up. I'm so cold that I got to kind of sit there for two minutes. 